Hi again. It's been a while. And I've, I've, I've been having a hard time finding good topics to share with you all. Because I'm doing the weekly topics on Trini Star Galactica. And I've been waiting for inspiration to hit me for what, what to do with these videos on this channel. Um, and so I thought that I might just talk about a few things that have been on my mind. Uh, I guess the first thing is that um, I have a huge number of subscribers now. And it's a little bit overwhelming. I never really thought that I'd be in this kind of position after making videos for less than a year. But I guess I am, and so what What I'm interested in, uh, I'm a little bit intimidated by the number of subscribers that I have right now, and so what I want to do is I want to extend my hand out and try to learn more about you. Who are you? Why are you watching this video? What is, what is it that made you subscribe? Are you transitioning yourself? Are you questioning? Are you done with your transition? Are you intersex? Are you genderqueer? Are you an old pervert? So please, this is your opportunity to leave a comment, leave a video response, um, send me a message. Um, the volume of messages that I've been getting, it's finally reached that point where I'm just unable to reply to every single one. So. Even if you don't get a reply from me, I promise you I've read it. And I promise you that I'm reading the messages that I receive. So, um, tell me about you. Don't be a stranger. You know, it's the internet here. <laughs> let's, let's take out, you all know so much about me. Bring, bring, bring some knowledge back into my world so that I can help serve you better. With that said, here's where things are in my transition. I have been on estrogen and testosterone blockers for almost one entire year now. And I've been transitioning for almost two and a half years. So it's just interesting for me to sit and reflect on where am I now? Where did I think I would be a year ago? Where did I think I would be two years ago? And um, you know, how is it all adding up? I've reached this point where I've been living full-time for more than a year now, and basically, you know, out in public, at my work, um, with my friends, with my family. Um, I'm Samantha. I'm a woman. I have, you know, my name has been changed. I'm still working on that gender marker, um, but, uh, I feel like that I've been socially able to transition and integrate into, into our world as Samantha, and I've really been able to put Samuel behind me. Not that I'll ever forget being, about being Samuel, but I don't think that I'll ever be Samuel again, um, even on the days that I try actually to be a little more androgynous, or I'm just feeling lazy and don't want to get all done up like this. So I'm really very happy about socially where I fit now in the world. Um, but there are still some things that bother me. And I don't know if, if they'll ever get better. And the first thing is my voice. Uh, because every once in a while when you know, I'm watching a movie, or talking to a friend, or, you know, meeting somebody new, you know, I just, I don't, I don't feel like I have a woman's voice. Sometimes I'm completely amazed at how, at how people could take me for being a female when I sound this way. Um, and, you know, when I try, when I try to do it, it hurts. And it feels, it feels unattainable. 
the voice that I want, the voice that I hear and hear, or the voice that I that I try to have. And, you know, I could do things like talk up here, and I could probably change my speech patterns to be a little bit more California girl, a valley girl, if you will, and just this kind of shit, just use my voice to do that, but that's not comfortable for me, and I mean, the voice, the voice that I'm using now, the vo this is, you know, this is the voice that I use in my daily life. This voice was hard to achieve, um, but, uh, I could always feel it within reach. And when I try to do this kind of thing, <laughs> maybe it sounds a little bit more like what I was kind of hoping my voice would sound like, but it's... It, it feels like it takes so much maintenance, and I feel like I'm constantly straining it to the point where I don't think I could use it all day every day. I, I just don't think it's possible. M maybe it's my next challenge to, to try to level up my voice, for lack of a better term. And I'm a geek. But... And if I'm not consciously thinking about it, then it, it just kind of falls back down to where I've, I've naturally landed, which is, again, much, much far removed from where I used to be, which is down here. Actually, even lower than this. Like, <laughs> very different from here. Very different from here. Uh, so, I, I, I don't know, this, I continue to struggle with my voice, and I don't actually have any, any lessons, lessons learned to share with you, just that I am still facing my own struggles and my own issues, um, in my perception of myself. Um, you know, I've had a couple of friends lately, trans woman friends, that are just completely, fabulously beautiful girls, and um, they've been talking about the further they get into transition and the more full time they are, um, they're more paranoid, uh, or they're they're more upset about the way they look, and I and that always was confusing to me, but I kind of have to admit that in the last two months or so. Um, I've started to feel very incongruent again. I feel like this face that I see in the mirror is, 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 it reminds me too much of Samuel. And it makes me want to change it. It makes me, it makes me think about getting FFS. And I know that it's going to be an avalanche of responses saying, you don't need FFS, you're beautiful, and I appreciate that, but I also feel that it, maybe it's something that I need for myself, and I don't know why, I don't know if I feel that way strong enough, and um, so I, I continue to face challenges, like, I, I guess I also have this kind of philosophical uh, resistance to the cosmetic surgery industry because I don't like the way they come to trans people, for example, and say, you can be a beautiful woman like you've always wanted to be if you just give us $30,000 and we'll rebuild your face. I find that messaging offensive. And I kind of have this weird standard, and I don't know where it came from, but as I've, as I've been successful in my transition, I've felt like I can get through this, I can get through this life without getting face surgery. I can do it. I don't need it. But lately, I don't know if I can pull it off. I don't know if I'm just going to be so upset when I see myself in the mirror sometimes. Okay, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm basically covered in a mask today because I'm wearing so much makeup, but 
but I'm not. I'm pretty upset with the way I look, so I'm struggling with things. We're all struggling with things. And I don't have any words of wisdom or pearls of wisdom for you today. Just that. I'm pretty much just like you. So. That's all for now. Thank you, and I will see you next time.